Track 8 1. In 1402, Chu Di, the third emperor in the Ming dynasty, came to power in China. He was very important, and he wanted everyone to know it. So he decided to build a treasure fleet of junks. Yes, junks. They were gigantic ships with four masts and nine sails. Each one carried more than 200 sailors. There was plenty of room for the large crew, and there were luxurious cabins with windows and balconies for important passengers. The emperor wanted to trade goods such as porcelain and silk, and he wanted to get rid of the pirates, the dangerous pirates who sailed the South China Sea. The ships were built in dry dock at Longjiang on the northeast coast of China. 2. But who would be in charge of this great fleet of ships? The emperor chose Zhong Ha. Zhong Ha had been taken prisoner at the age of ten and sent to work in the army, so he was tough. He served the emperor well. He became one of the most powerful and respected men at the emperor's court, which is why the emperor chose him to become admiral of the fleet. He'd get rid of those pirates. By the autumn of 1405, everything was ready, and the fleet sailed from Nanjing Harbour down the Yangtze River and into the East China Sea. 3. So where did they go to first? They sailed 650 kilometres down the coast. They waited at Taiping for favourable monsoon winds to take them over the South China Sea to Champa. 4. When the fleet arrived in Champa, in modern-day South Vietnam, porcelain and silk were sold to the people there. Zhong Ha took back to the Chinese emperor gifts of beautiful wood and ivory that the people in Champa had given him. 5. From Champa, Zhong Ha sailed south to the island of Java, where he traded more porcelain and silk for spices and copper. 6. So far, the fleet had followed the line of the coast or only made short journeys over open sea. But now they had to cross the ocean to Ceylon, modern-day Sri Lanka. How did they find their way when they couldn't see land? They used a magnetic compass. The compass had been invented in China over a thousand years before, in about 200 BCE. 7. They reached Ceylon, but the king of Ceylon was not pleased to see them. Hmm, so they didn't stay there long, where they weren't welcome. They continued up the west coast of India to Calicut, their final destination. 8. They stayed in Calicut for several months, trading their goods for jewels, copper and pepper. Then, in April 1407, Jung Ha set sail for home. The emperor would be very pleased to see him again. 9. Passing through the Straits of Malacca, the fleet fought the pirates. They were the ones who attacked and robbed ships in the area. Remember them? Over several months, Jung Ha captured the pirate leaders and sank most of their ships. 10. But there was another problem waiting for Zhong Ha. As the fleet was sailing back across the South China Sea, there was a terrible storm. Suddenly a strange light appeared in the sky, and the storm soon passed. Zhong Ha and his sailors couldn't believe their eyes. They thought it was a miracle. In fact, the light was St. Elmo's fire, which scientists now know is caused by electricity. 11. Jung Ha had been away for almost two years when he finally brought his ship safely home to Nanjiang. The voyage had been a great success. The emperor was so pleased that over the next 26 years he sent his treasure fleet on five more expeditions. One of them was to the east coast of Africa, from where the fleet brought back a giraffe as a present for the emperor. No one had ever seen this strange, gentle animal in China before.
The Emperor was absolutely delighted.